Good morning, attendees. So for now, I will just uh, switch on my MySoul account first. Did you see my my soul account? Can you give a virtual thumbs up or just comment in the chat box? Am I audible? Okay, thank you. So thank you, Ma'am Lisa, for introducing to us the third party apps for asynchronous and synchronous uh, activities uh, with the use of or integrating that to our MySoul account. So in here, uh, I want to show you, this is on the teacher side or perspective about designing activities in MySoul to improve learner to assessment and feedback engagement. So this is the teacher mode. So I am showing you the virtual classroom of the teacher. So I will just uh, click my uh, slide presentation by the use of our light box gallery. So here I will open this particular section. And before we will start with the designing of activities in my soul to improve learner to assessment and feedback engagement, I will show you the uh, the sample format of outcome outcomes based teaching and learning with in line with the micro framework of OBTL. So this is the light box uh, gallery in our my soul. So for instance, if you would like to use this one during your uh, synchronous session or you have your live session about a particular topic. So in this part, you can see now the slide. Okay, so here uh, we have the designing activities in my soul to improve learner to assessment and feedback engagement. So in here, we will take a look at the OBTL or the out outcomes based uh, teaching and learning and constructive alignment of this micro framework, we have the LO or we have the intended learning outcome. And then we have the teaching and learning activities. And then we have the assessment. So it should have a constructive alignment with those three components. This is a sort of review or recap in your, in your uh, teaching experience. This is our new, uh, our new mode of delivering our curriculum to our learners. So we must see to it the alignment of intended learning outcome. So these questions are mind on where you are going. So learning outcomes. So you will define learning outcomes in terms of what the students are supposed to be able to perform after learning. And then second, uh, teaching and learning activities. So this is someone uh, uh, you put in mind that this is how are you going to get there. So basically, you will select teaching and learning activities that are likely to ensure that the learning outcomes are achieved. So based on the introductions of the third party apps introduced by uh, Mom Lisa or teacher Lisa, so you will select the best that suits your intended learning outcome for that particular lesson. And then we have the third, we have the assessment. So question in mind, uh, this will be the, how do you know you are there? So this is question in mind in the assessment. How do you know you are there? So this could be both as motivation for learning and a measure of learning effectiveness. 
So you choose a method or methods to assess the achievement of the learning outcomes, and then you assess the learning outcomes and check to see how well they match with the, uh, with the intended learning outcome or the ILO. So in this part, uh, you can see this is a teacher-centered approach. Uh, no, that student-centered approach. You can see at, in, in the middle, the student-centered approach. So it should constructively alignment of those three uh, components, the learning outcomes or the ILO, and then you will choose now the TLA or the teaching and learning activities, and then you have your assessment. Okay, it should have a constructive alignment for those components. Next, here, this will show you the TLA or the suggested TLA for online environment or online education or ODL. So we have the, in the table is the Bloom uh, Digital Taxonomy. So from our for, from the lower order thinking skills or the lots to hats. So we have the low order thinking skills. We have remembering, understanding, and applying. And then we have the hats or analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So at the right side, you can also see some of the online activities embedded in this particular uh, taxonomy. Example, you have your remembering. So you can perform that sample activities. You have your flashcard, or you can use the uh, sample uh, Jamboard as introduced uh, earlier. And then you have also searching for facts. So example, search a particular terminologies. So another is you have understanding. So uh, example, you have your equivalent uh, online online activities like, just like discussion boards or discussion forums. And then you integrate commenting by the use of your uh, collaborative tools like Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Sheets. And then you have your blogging and then you have your tweeting for that particular third-party apps. And then in applying, so you can do that as simulations for that particular activity. You do podcasts. And then for the HOTS or higher order thinking skills, so example for analyzing, you can annotate a particular videos or you can do polling. And then you have your group negotiation or group discussion and then reflection. And then you have your evaluating. So you have your peer review, you have moderating discussions and so on. And then you have your creating. So example, you will create a presentation, uh, video recording and uh, digital storytelling. So these are some example of uh, Bloom, uh, Bloom digital taxonomy with regards to the uh, with regards to have the uh, we have the lots and hats based from the taxonomy remembering up to creating so that is our uh, example activities and then after that so we already identify a particular a particular tla for our particular lesson so now let's decide now the assessment method to use. It could be formative or summative. So take note. So this, uh, this particular table shows you the comparison and differences between formative and summative. So example, we have formative. So this, the formative during the time is uh, during a learning, uh, uh, learning activity or unit. So for example, you can do have a short quiz that is unlimited attempts, and then it will reveal their score right away as well as the feedback. So in that case, they will just simply familiarize the context of that particular lesson. 
And then the time in the summative, this is at the conclusion of a learning activity or unit. You have your UE or unit exam. And then the goal of formative is to improve learning. So again, formative is not a, a part of the grading, but it it is uh, it can be recorded lang. Uh, it is not graded, but it can be recorded. This is uh, koan lang siya for, for formative lang siya, ng assessment. And then the summative part, this is to make a decision. So this is recorded activities. And then the feedback, so from formative, so return to material learning issues. So for example, in our my soul, then you will just activate now the feedback, the overall feedback or the item, uh, item per item feedback, as well as the scores, correct answers and wrong answers. And then you have your uh, final judgment for the summative. So in this part, uh, we will not alter, uh, we will not activate the feedback because some of the students can add, didn't take a particular unit exam. So we will just disable the feedback. And after, after the completion of all the learners about their UE or unit exam, then you will just activate the feedback for the unit exam. And then we have, we have the frame of reference. So in the frame of reference for formative, it always criterion. So evaluating all students according to the same criteria. And then we have also in the summative, the frame of reference, sometimes normative or comparing each student against the others, or sometimes criterion, evaluating each student according to the same criteria. So this is just a sort of recap from the OBTL and micro, uh, micro framework of it. So now let's, I hope you understand and I hope you refresh from uh, getting excited when making your TLA as well as your assessment method. Make it sure that uh, they should have a constructive alignment with your uh, ILO or intended learning outcomes. So now I will go back to the our my soul or designing activities in my soul to improve learner to assessment and feedback engagement. So let's start with designing activities in my soul. So in this part, as you can see, here we will uh, open this particular section. This is using of personalized uh, personalized learn uh, learning this designer or PLD. So we have here, as discussed by teacher Lisa about the PLD. So for example, in this case, when we do our assessment, so again, you will uh, pick particular TLA or uh, particular online activities, and then you, cop uh, you pair with uh, what kind of ass assessment or assessment, it could be formative or summative. For example, in this part, I enable this particular uh, functions, okay? I use a particular PLD to activate the lear uh, my learners about the particular activity that will happen in this particular uh, time. So I use PLD. And then I integrate the AFK or away from keyboard activity during an assessment. And then I use of restriction. So what does it mean? So you will not uh, you will not take the quiz as long as you will perform a particular activity. So uh, later I will show you uh, what does it mean. And then you will use other types of questions like drag and drop. And then I will show you some of the overview of the questions from the quiz. 
and then use a feedback in a quiz, item per item, or overall. So example, overall means if they got 100%, this is a particular range like, na, uh, like 90 to 100, they will get a particular feedback and then 80 to 90 feedback, overall feedback. And then item per item, this pertains to the questions. So you make a uh, questions and then you will give the feedback. So in this part, I will use uh, uh, the TLA is the TLA that I will use in my soul is we have the quiz feature. Okay, the quiz feature is the TLA, and then the assessment for this one is to grade my unit exam. Okay. To grade that particular activity, I have PL, I activate PLD as, as an announcement for the learners to take the quiz, and then I use the restriction, okay? So to show that, I will go to that, uh, the student mode. So again, in this part, in this, the entire uh, environment in this virtual classroom is the teacher mode. As you can see, I am the teacher. And then you can see, you can edit the section. So now I will just uh, open my student part. Okay. Did you see now the student part or the learner? So for this part, this is the student. The name is My Soul Kid. So now I will open my virtual classroom. So once I click it, I will be redirected with the PLD. So just like here, my soul, uh, you need to make uh, you need to make this particular activity to proceed to the unit exam. So once I click it, okay, then I will just perform this particular. Uh, particular activity. Again, there is a separate training for this uh, different types of PLD uh, activation. But this is just a simple uh, uh, using of PLD. So in that case, we have activated now the PLD to give a notices or notification from our learners. And then here, you can see here, we have, uh, this is the student mode. So you can see here that you will activate this one once you're done with this particular activity, okay? And then as you also notice in the particular uh, sections, this is a condition or you restrict it. Not available unless you get a score particular score in unit exam, okay? So here we will do the first activity. So in this case, this is an assignment feature. So this is your uh, integrating AFK or away from keyword activities. So example here, DYI uh, Father's Day card. So we have here, make a Father's Day card and give it to him and then take a picture and evidence and type your Google Drive file link here. So example, picture, and then the student will now submit his or her uh, link. So example here, uh, you just copy a particular link. For example, this is Google Drive file link. And then you will just save changes. In this part, this is not yet the activation. Activation when uh, you when you particularly uh, submit an assignment because this is not save as a mark for grading. This is just basically a draft. Okay, draft for uh, submission for this particular activity. So once to uh, so you need to complete the process in submitting. So you will click the submit assignment. So once you click the submit assignment, 
and then you will click the confirmation of that assignment and then it will now generate to you a certain uh, PLD to know this is just to add a teacher and student engagement. Okay, so example, your name, then thank you for submitting, blah, 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 and so on. And then you will just simply close. And in that case, you can proceed to your unit exam. So for example, okay, the unit exam is now activated. As you can see, it is marked complete by the circle with check mark and then the quiz uh, unit exam is now enabled so you just simply click this one and then you will answer that particular quiz and as you notice here in this particular uh, sections it will not uh, enable because you will not uh, you need to attempt the unit exam okay you need to uh, you need to attempt the unit exam and get a particular score so for example here in your particular section you click unit exam and in that case you need to specify your instruction clearly and then you note uh, like example to pass this uh, test you need to achieve a score of over 75%. If not, uh, again, this is unlimited or it's up to you. It's how you are going to use your assessment method. It could be formative or summative. But in this case, I use this one as summative. So they are given only three attempts. And then in this case, I will just take the quiz now. So here, this is the look of the quiz. So start. So here is the multiple choice question. And then you will just simply uh, choose the correct answer. Uh, in making a quiz, a uh, short advice that took uh, in order to reduce the online cheating. So you need to, uh, you need uh, this uh, in one page, there should be uh, two questions or one questions. So you need to integrate that one. So imagine if you have 100 items. So again, it's up to you on how you, uh, how many questions per page. But as advice, uh, it could be two or one for reducing the cheating purposes. So they cannot uh, just go back to the previous one. Okay. and. And then second, we have the multiple choice. This is another multiple choice, but here you give the statement and this will become, uh, this. you have your choices and then now it's a type of multiple choice, but I forgot particular what type of these uh, questions. <laughs> so you provide the specific uh, arrangement or uh, options and then you will just pick only one or only or two or and so on so example here in this part this is all multiple choice type in our my soul but it's how you structure your questions that promotes higher order thinking skills okay and then you will proceed to the next page and then here this is another question. This is a uh, all or nothing questions. So again, you have your question and then you have your statement. Nga, nga, please select three options. So example here. And then here you have question number four. This is drag and drop into text questions. So you have the questions and then all you need to do is drag and then drop. So for example, here, uh, drag and then drop. And then we have here, and then here. So example, and then next question. So here. 
So you need to answer. So just simply drag and drop and then automatically it will remove that one to the choices. And then you have here and then and then example here and then you will proceed to the next. So in this part, this is the type of question. This is drag and drop markers uh, question type. So in this part, you need to incorporate the borders okay, of this particular image and then you will just place the particular name. So example, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Apollinario Mabini, and then here, and then Andres Bonifacio, Dr. Cerizal, Juan Luna, and then Emilio Jacinto. And then here, another is we have drag and drop unto image uh, question type. So you can see here a particular image and then particular uh, placeholder. So you will just simply drag the choices to its uh, designated position. So here, and then I click and then next. And then here is another type of drag and drop matching question type. So here we have the flags and then we have the choices. So example here, this is uh, Malaysia. Malaysia, Myanmar, North Korea, and then we have India, <laughs> India, and then Iran, Iran. I guess that's correct. <laughs> and then next, you click the next page. And then here is random short answer matching question type. So in this case, this is random for all short answer in your particular question bank that pertains to the short uh, they use the short answer as the question type. And then they will just get the random. Uh, you, will, uh, you will specify how many questions that you want to be randomized. This is random a uh, question with a, particular quest, uh, with a particular question type, and that is short answer. So in this case, here, and then I will just click. And then here is the mat, uh, select matching words question type. So in this case, you only set up the question and then you give the particular uh, choices or option. So in this case, we'll just click here and then uh, then here and then connect. and then finish attempt. You click the finish attempt and then you will submit all and finish. And then there is a dialog box, so submit all and finish. And automatically it will reveal the scores. And you will see the score 34 and, th and this one, the feedback. So this is pertains to the uh, general feedback or the overall feedback. So you disable the review part. So they will just get this particular feedback in the form of image, text, and so on. And then they have the part, uh, the reattempt is now activated if you want the second attempt. And then if we go back to our, our page, our virtual classroom homepage, so you will see the activation of the remaining sections, okay? So here, uh, for example, in your unit exam, you have here the AFK, A AFK activity, and then you proceed with the quiz. And then for instance, if you want to customize a certificate, then they will just get a particular certificate with that given requirement of score. 
So again, there's a separate training for this one. This is generating a, a feedback engagement through the use of certificate of certificate just like this one, certificate of appreciation, or you can do badges as well. Again, there is a separate upscaling uh, session for this one. So if I click this one, so it will now uh, view or give me the certificate. So again, you can customize. So for example, here, this is a simple certificate. So my name and then the unit exam and then my score. So again, there's, there's a separate uh, training for this one. So in that case, I already uh, uh, have a feedback by the use of the custom certificate as well as the PLDs and then the, uh, and then the overall feedback. So now I will click to the next activity that is choice activity. So just like uh, in the third party or the polling or this is uh, like example uh, in, as introduced earlier, we have poll everywhere. So in our my soul, we have also uh, polling. This is called choice. Okay. So in choice, so all you need to do is give a particular questions and then you will start a poll. So example, assessment for learning, how this particular section uh, were introduced. So example here, I understand it perfectly. So save my choice. So in that case, you answered a particular poll and then that is in the choice. This is for single uh, statement only for the polling part. So example, uh, example if you have announcement like who are in favor of uh, Monday asyn uh, synchronous classes and choose the asynchronous classes, then you can do the, the choice part to do that. And then you have what we call the use of dialogue. This is just uh, like an off, uh, it could be real time or, or offline. This is based from your instructions. If example, if, you, if your learners want to give immediate feedback about a particular uh, concern, so you need to be in your my soul at that particular duration of time. And then you will just, send a message to your instructor and then you will just create and then you will pick the people or you will just encode the name. So example, these are enrolled uh, student or teacher in your virtual classroom. For this case, okay, I will inform sir, my teacher. And then of course you do the basic email uh, etiquette, you give your title, and then your concern. And then if you have attachment, then you can do, but take note, we have a limit, we have five MB, MB. So example here, we'll just click a file and then upload. I will just upload a particular file. And then this is a sort of attachment. Okay, too low. Uh, so let's make. So again, there is, is a dialog box will appear if your size is uh, exceed with a limit. So example here, P PDF. Okay, you, usually uh, in this part, you will suggest your learners uh, to convert that one to PDF for a lighter version or lighter file size. And after that, they will send this one to their particular uh, receiver. So to the instructor. So in this case, I will show you the, uh, the, the choice, uh, the dialogue activity in my teacher view. So here is my teacher view. Okay, this is my teacher view. 
So I will now uh, click the, uh, the particular section, the dialogue, and I can see that I have a particular uh, message. So I will just simply click it. And then I will just uh, click particular, uh, particular message. And then I will reply. And then I will give attachment if necessary. So again, click the send. And then this is the teacher view. So in that case, there is a feedback engagement. You can use the dialogue activity as the uh, feedback regarding to a particular unit exam, or you can have a consultation uh, by the use of this particular uh, particular activity, activity, the dialogue. So I will now go to my uh, student view as my soul. So I will just refresh it. And then I will go to the dialogue activity and I can see I have one message. This is from our instructor and then I will just simply click and then you can see the response of your instructor. Again, they, you can uh, use this one to your, uh, you can set this as synchronous activity or asynchronous activity. It's how you structure, or it's how you give instruction to your uh, learners. Uh, for example, you can have this uh, send a private message to, to your particular instructor. If example, nag run out, so kailangan na attachment, so in a, a short of excuse letter ba. So you can use the dialogue activity for that. And then you have in our my soul, we also have feedback activity. Okay. In the feedback activity, this is a very limited function. It's just it's somehow related to the uh, Google Forms, but you have limited question types. So, for example, here, uh, feedback is basically used for uh, feedback activity is basically used for evaluating the course, helping improve the content for later participants, enable participants to sign for a course module or events, and then and so many uh, and so many school policies or uh, choices. So if you compare it to the choice, choice you can only post one question. In feedback you can Pose uh, several questions with different types. Or you can post that one in one particular page, or you can have that in the second page. So if you click particular uh, uh, feedback activity in our My Soul, then here uh, I have already completed this particular feedback. Okay. So this will be the view of the feedback activity in my teacher view. So I will just go to the home page of my virtual classroom. And then I will click now the feedback activity. So I can see I have one responses, one response of that feedback. If I click the feedback, then you can show the response. So you can do this one by anonymous or the name. So it, it's up to your setting, uh, set, set up. But there is a separate training for upscaling for this feedback, choice, and questionnaire. And then you can see here the responses of that particular student. And then if you scroll down, you can see the, okay, if we go back to the student mode, a use of comments in, okay, we've done with the feedback activity. So we click to the use of comments in Google Drive and assignment. So basically this pertains to your feedback, okay, feedback engagement. 
So example, this is the particular activity. And then here, you will just give your submission. This is in uh, online text is available. So you need to place your, uh, you need to place your Google Drive file link. So for instance, okay, I will just make a particular activity. Let's go here. And then, okay. So take note, if you want to have the feedback, okay. So for example, uh, you need to attach a particular image for this activity. This is DYI uh, collage, okay. So for example, Okay, I will save this particular image and then I will just simply upload that in the in my Google Drive. So in this case, so I will just show you. Example, here is your uh, Google Drive. So I will just upload the file. So for instance, the file is in a uh, graphic. So you click open, you click the particular image and then open. And then here you just simply uh, right click and then uh, share, click the share. And then in order for you to have a feedback, so instruct your student uh, to, to collaborate with this particular file. So imagine this is good only for groupings, okay? Groupings, not individual projects. Because if you have uh, 60 students, then automatically they will share to you that particular file and then it will notify you in your SU email. So example, this is particular uh, group activity. So for example, your teacher, then you set him or her as an editor where they can annotate your particular file. And then you click the send. And then here, you will just simply right click and then you get a link and then you will change the privacy settings to Silliman University and then you will just copy the link and then click done. So this is the student mode. And then if the student will submit, so they will just simply right click and then paste the link of their Google Drive and then save changes and then submit assignment and then continue. And then in that case, you can now, uh, you can now grade the activity from your teacher's side. Okay. So here we need to refresh. So here we click uh, use of comments in Google Drive assignment. And then here you can see one, uh, one submitted already the output. And then you click. So automatic, this is basically in the group. So train soul and then my soul kid is group two. So they will receive that particular link. So to Grade it, so click the grade. And then you can just right click the Google Drive file link and then open in a new tab. Then you can simply, you can see you are 
as a teacher, you are set as editor, then you can see this add comment. So you can leave a message like nice and then comment. So you have here the uh, annotate the comment to that particular file. Or you can have a uh, example, they submit a particular essay, then you will just simply click particular uh, placeholder and then drag and then you will just uh, give your comment here and then click the comment button. And then this is the file for the submission and then you go back to your my soul and then you will grade this one. So this is a simple direct grading. So you will just sing, uh, simply encode the score. So example 15. But if you make this one into rubrics, so again, there is a particular video in making a rubric. And then here, example 15 out of 20. And then here, this will be the using of feedback uh, uh, comments in the assignment activity feature. So this is a sort of general feedback for their output. So in this one, this is a corrections from this particular output. And then here, this is the overall feedback because we activate now the feedback comments. And then you just click the save and save changes and then click OK. And then you go back to the, to the assignment and then here you can view the submission and you will see the scores from the group mates, okay? So that's the usage of the use of comments in Google Drive and assignment. So in this part, okay, so we do the feedback engagement setup, okay? So first, let us see the feedback engagement in our quiz, okay? So as we did earlier, we answered the unit exam. So let's see the feedback engagement for this part, okay? So in here, so we have the unit exam. So to edit it, so click the pencil icon and then you scroll down and then you can see we have the uh, feedback, overall feedback, okay? So if you click the overall feedback, you can see the grade boundary is 100%. So you give a feedback there as an overall. If their score is 100% of that particular row score or highest possible score, then they will get, uh, get this feedback. And then you will just simply uh, give the boundary. So example, from 90%, then they will give this particular feedback and so on. Again, to add another feedback, so you just simply click the add three more feedback fields button to generate another feedback. And then once you save and to, uh, save, uh, save and return to course, so once the, the student already take the exam, they will see already the feedback. So example, this is the student view. So you can see here, we have the overall feedback. And then here, you can see the feedback available or you just simply click the unit exam and automatically it will give you the overall feedback, which is in an image form. This is a uh, very good based from the rate, uh, based from the percentage that you set up. And then if you do the formative, okay, so we go back to the teacher uh, mode, okay. If you do the formative, so for example, you have unlimited attempts. So example, you have, you set a particular quiz, a particular quiz that has a multiple attempts or unlimited attempts. Then you click 
example this particular is a short quiz or short quiz so you click the edit edit pencil and then okay so you give your instruction here so basically uh they will know this is formative or uh formative or summative based from your instructions and notes and then you click the save and display and then you can now edit the quiz, okay? So for instance, in a multiple choice, okay? Once, uh, before you deploy your, uh, your quiz feature, it could be formative or summative, please have time to double check all the questions, okay? Before you deploy, because if you deploy it with, uh, correct responses, okay. Correct responses uh, with incorrect responses, it will also affect the, their grades. But again, you can regrade it. But here, if you uh, commit uh, commit a uh, uh, wrong uh, wrong options, then your learners already attempted this particular uh, particular quiz. You need to uh, manually uh, manually grade it because you modify the entire structure as well as the choices. And in that case, that particular quiz is already been attempted by your learners. So for this part, if you can see, we already activated the overall feedback. So this is based from your overall feedback percentage of the score. So example, you have uh, 38, uh, 38 points or highest possible score. Again, this is in percentage. So example, they got 34 divided by uh, 38. So approximately uh, you have 84 or 84%. So 84% then it will give the overall feedback. But if you want to have your short quiz as a formative, then you can have the item by item feedback by clicking on your uh, question. So example, question number one. So in question number one, this is multiple choice. Then here you have the feedback. So if that is correct answer, then you will give your feedback you give a rationale of your feedback, okay? So again, in question two, rationale, again, this is good for formative assessment. So approximately a good formative, it could be composed of 10 questions or five. This is just to familiarize the concept, okay? So that's how you, engage with the following uh, design designing activities in my soul to improve learner to assessment and feedback engagement by the use of your uh, PLD okay again we have a separate uh, session for this one and then integrating AFK and as uh, during an assessment away from keyboard activities just like if you are, if you require them a creating a particular essay, you will write that one as a, in a piece of paper and then take a photo. So just like uh, those activities that under away from keyboard activities. So there are many activities of AFK away from keyboard. And then you need to have the restriction. So again here, restriction in terms of uh, as activities or particular sections, okay? You can have that as a restriction. And then you can have the use of other types of questions. So again, uh, those multiple choice with a drug, uh, multiple choice, drag and drop features like drag and drop into text, drag and drop into image and so on. And then you can activate the feedback in a quiz item by item. Uh, 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 
use of feedback in a quiz, item by item, and overall feedback. So in this case, how to restrict, okay? How to restrict this particular activity? So for example, here you have your assignment. So you click the first activity. So example, I generate the uh, I generate a particular notification that they need to answer this particular activity first, and then they will proceed to the next. So click here, click the pencil icon in the assignment uh, assignment part or feature, and then you will see here the activation completed. So by default, the activation completed. So you will mark that one or change that one to show activity as completed when conditions are met. You click that one and then you click. So here you click the submit assignment to this activity to complete it. So that's why you need to click the submit assignment to activate a certain PLD. And then that will proceed to the next uh, to the next activity that is in the exam or unit exam. So that's how you design activities in my soul to improve learner to assessment and feedback engagement. So please take note with the O uh, outcomes based teaching and learning format with the construct alignment for those three components, the ILO, the TLA, and then we have the, we have the assessment. Again, it's how you structure your given TLA that corresponds to your intended learning outcome and then what type of assessment. It could be formative or summative. So that's all. Thank you very much for uh, listening. So now we will proceed to the open forum. Okay, uh. thank So if you have any questions, clarifications whatsoever, you can type it in the chat box or you may virtually raise your hand. So we have a question from um, Kathleen. Is it possible that you can give us hard copy just like before? Yes, sir, Fredly, right? Oh, not really hard copy, but soft copy or the video presentation link. Okay, yes, we will be sharing this uh, recording in our Seoul uh, Facebook page. Yes, and also in our Seoul website. So there is a, a question for Sir Fredly. Yes, yeah, Sir Fredly, is it possible for you to share your slides? Yes, yes. Sir Fredly said yes. Ma'am Yola, you'll be sharing the, the slides. And yes, go Ma'am Nadja, please ask. Good morning. Good morning, Ma'am. Good morning. Yeah. I'm actually very interested in the example you gave earlier, see uh, Lisa, the breakout rooms using yes, a Google Doc, because mm. I've seen it being used to elementary with my daughters, no? Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to find out how to do that in Seoul. So I just put the link for the Google Doc, but how do I integrate the groupings? Because I know how to do groups. I know how to put the link to the Google Doc. 
but from how you showed it in your soul classroom, parang they were joined together. How do you do that? Okay, let me just uh, share my screen again so you can see it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay. Uh, how do we integrate uh, each yeah, so of how, this? Yeah, it's a link, right? That's yes, just a this URL. one is yes, a URL. And then, and then in your uh, Google Docs, you just need to manually input or share this document uh, file to each okay. of the so group just member. The email of the students. yes, just type in the email okay. and then make sure you you make uh, set it as editor. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, do I have any other questions? I have one more question. Yes, go ahead. Um, when, if we, because I've noticed, I think you're using Canva in some of your presentations, mm -hmm. right? Not PowerPoints. So if I'm presenting in Google Meet, I tend to find when I, if I'm just using my laptop, my laptop and not using another screen on the side, when I present my PowerPoint, so the whole Google Meet classroom disappears, um, Will that happen also if I do it using Canva? If I share the screen, it'll just be the same. I yes. won't see my students. Yes, basically. Ah, okay. But there is a, a in Google Meet, um, I'm not sure though, but I think there's a gallery view as well where you can, uh, it can be like this one where you can see your presentation and your students. That's true, but if we do cause the PowerPoint press show when we show it rather than just mm -hmm. like this one where you see we have to use uh, the share the entire screen. Cause if so that the student can see the slide bigger. But yeah, I I guess we just have to Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, sorry. I was asking if we can, if the rest of my colleagues here has uh, experienced that with Google Meet where, they, uh, where the presentation can be full screen. So they also said a not. So it's, if you want to have it that way, um, you can use Zoom na lang, ma'am. Because with Zoom, you can uh, actually okay. uh, manage uh, uh -oh. your, the students can the manage how they, yes. They present, mm -hmm. uh -oh. so good. Okay, so we have another question, but not so related and more with the soul. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. I'm Nadi. Sorry, the soul people know me already. So, <laughs> just, is there a way for you to make us delete our chat box messages in one go? Not one by one. <laughs> Last time ko pa na tanong no, yun. Hindi talaga. Jade, no, there's no option yet for that one. We have to manually do it. Like one Isa, isa one. ko na, sinisimulang ko na ngayon. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they will upgrade and then yeah. it's much more convenient, diba, if we can do it. Just like uh, delete, delete it all. Mm, delete oh. all. Sige, sige, I wonder thanks. why. Wala pa upgrade, wala pa update. Oh, sige, salamat. Okay, welcome.
to end this one, kindly uh, fill up this post webinar survey for this is uh, this will be the basis for giving your certificate of participation and attendance. Mom Lisa, teacher Lisa, do you have additional info? No, Can you post the link of ah, the okay. survey form? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I will put that one to our chat box. Okay. So. So, so Fredly, did you paste it? Oh, already? yes, yes, I already. I already paste it. it. I can't see it, Sir Fred. Ah, so anyways, okay. <laughs> so uh, I hope you will be joining us again on our succeeding trainings. There are a lot of interesting trainings there. And thank you again so very much for joining us this morning. I hope you have learned a lot. See you again soon on the next trainings. Thank you for Thank attending. you so much, everyone.